Hi guys. Now, if you speak to most people who don't own an electric car, the fact that you lose a little bit of range when you use the heater or air conditioning, uh, that's, a, that's a bad thing. It's a negative thing. However, in my opinion, it's the opposite. It's a very good thing that you have that capability. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. A normal car obviously has to have the engine running, which means you have to be in or near the car, and then it has to be running for 5, 10, 15 minutes, depending on what car you've got, before it generates enough heat in the engine to then pass that into the cabin to heat it up and then melt the ice on the windscreen or, or whatever. An electric car obviously relies on the main drive battery, which means you lose a little bit of range, but it means you can do this from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to be near the car. I could be miles away from the car and set the preheat going using my phone or tablet. A typical example would be over the last couple of months, we've had quite a bit of uh, snowy and icy weather, definitely below zero. And I usually have breakfast, turn the preheat on on the car, whilst everybody else is outside scraping their car window down, getting rid of the ice, I just get into a nice toasty warm car and uh, set off. So it saves me time, it means I'm more comfortable, and uh, well, it's just really, really good for the sake of losing a little bit of range. But how much range do you actually lose? Well, it's about minus one, two degrees outside. The uh, windscreen is icy, so I thought I'd do a test to see exactly how much energy you use on a full 15 minute preheat, because on the Leaf at least, after 15 minutes, the preheat stops. So let's have a bit of a test. So if we'll, we'll use the GIDs, 35.3%, that is what I have before I start the remote charge. All I do is press that button and the remote charge will start. I'm now going to move the camera so it points to the car and then we can time it all properly. I'm now going to start the remote climate charger and we should see that kick in and I'll start the timer as well. Okay, just started timing. just see the remote charge start there, a little blue light flashing. So I'm going to come back in 15 minutes and see what the state of charge is. Enjoy! You can just see there on the state of health, the heater using some power. It's dropped from 3.5 to 3250. That is just to get the uh, heat into the heat pump so to speak that will drop steadily over the next few minutes All right, we're about just over five minutes in. It's dropped down to two and a half, well, two and a half thousand watts, basically. So as you can see, as the cabin heats up, basically uses the less, less electricity until it just tops it off. We're now just over 10 minutes in. And you can see that's dropped down to 2000 watts. Right, we are now near as damn it. To 15 minutes and right on cue the car has shut down its preheat basically because it shuts down after 15 minutes as that just proves so I'll now check the battery temperature I think I'll do it inside the car where it's nice and warm though because it's freezing out here Ooh. oh that's good oh it's nice and toasty in here Ooh, that's nice. It's quite warm. Whew. I'm too warm now. I have to turn the preheat temperature down. It's uh, set to a 21 degrees is my preheat, which is done on the car settings itself. Right. Let's uh, open this up and see what we have. I'll use the Nissan Leaf uh, tablet holder. Okay. As you can see there, we have 32.2. We have 35.3. So we use 3.1% to preheat this car over the full 15 minutes. The temperature is still, according to the car, minus one outside. It's probably about 20 inside here because it's really nice and toasty. So there we are, 3.1% 
when it's minus one at least outside for a full 15 minute preheat. Obviously if it's much colder outside, that might have an effect. Uh, typically I use preheat for anything below kind of five degrees really, 10 degrees. So then it wouldn't use as much because it wouldn't have to put as much energy in the cabin to get it up to the preset temperature. So 3% in range terms would probably, in this weather anyway, knock off about three, three, four miles. Personally, I think losing three or four miles uh, to not have to scrape the car down, to get into a nice toasty warm car is well worth it. And quite frankly, a major benefit to owning an electric car. If I took the other car, the procedure would be get in car, start car, waste a ton of petrol or diesel, I guess if you've got one, uh, wait for the car to heat up whilst you're scraping it down. And then when you get in the car, five, 10 minutes later, you drive off and if you're lucky, five or 10 minutes later, you finally got warm inside the, uh, the the cabin so as i said before people view it as kind of a a negative thing that you lose a bit of battery when you use the heater or, or air conditioning i view it as the complete opposite it's one of the biggest benefits to own an electric car not having to do that and we've had quite a decent winter this year in the uk um snow plenty you know, plenty of below freezing weather lots of ice on the windscreen sort of stuff and not once have I had to scrape the car down. I'm usually eating my breakfast as I pre-eat the car. 10 minutes later, I go out, get in and go to work whilst my neighbors are. <laughs> so yes, it's, 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 it's a good thing. And that's how much it uses. So um, hopefully this little video will be a little bit interesting to at least three people, maybe, maybe two. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you soon.